Logan. Jim Gavin going back, goal side, prods it away. Comes to Canavan, Peter Canavan. His brother just alongside him. Here's Jody Gormley. That's a great start for Tyrone, and Jody Gormley kicks over their third point. Well, he's only scored two points in the entire championship so far. Well, this was a, an excellent point set up by Peter the Great, as they call him, and Jody Gormley is a student at the University of Ulster, Jordanstown, where his student union president presides here. The Dubs followers, whatever about the team, I think are shell-shocked. Here's Gormley again. They've certainly won midfield in these opening minutes, but it's early days yet. Stephen Lawn leaping in the air there with Keith Galvin. Comes down to Paul Beelan. Free to Dublin. Keith Barr kicking. And that will steady down the nerves a bit. A wonderful free kicked over in excellent fashion by Keith Barr. Knocked forward here by Jim Gavin. Does such useful work. And that's a free kick for Dublin. Faye Devlin's tackle there goes punished by the referee, Paddy Russell. A chance for Charlie Redmond to test the kicking skills. Not much hint of a thigh strain there. Over it sailed, and Charlie puts just the minimum between the teams. Coming for it there and making it his was Keith Barr. Up quickly to take it. Towards Jason Sherlock. Certainly causing a few early headaches for Chris Lawn. Jim Gavin. Sherlock again. Fouled. Free to Dublin. Jason thought about taking it quickly there. And the older heads on the team, I think, told him just take it easy. Plenty of time. Just a variation on a theme, but over it goes. And the sides are level, and the Dubs have made a full recovery. Three points apiece then after ten minutes. Some holding by uh, Jody Gormley. And the referee wants the free taken from the correct position as play continue there and Pat O'Neill making his point. Well, they were slow to settle, as we know, against Cork and then showed a maturity. Keith Barr across towards Desi Farrell. Desi against Faye Devlin. That's an awkward angle, but he makes very little of it. Des Farrell gets his first point. And Dublin take the lead for the first time. Yeah, yeah, great ball in here, and Desi fetched it well, uh, pretended to go right, and then slammed it over with his left leg. Marvellous score. Yes, tremendous accuracy. Desi being marked by Seamus McCallum. Ball comes down here towards Kieran Corr. It's a quiet opening to this match. Now Paul Clark. Lovely ball, loved inside there. And across came Paul Devlin. Charlie Redmond trying to pick it up. Redmond advancing. Back it goes to Jason Sherlock. It's gone wide. Protest that it should perhaps be a 45. That was close. It was a wonderful ball through the centre initially to set it all up with Jason Sherlock and Charlie Redmond in there. Yes, a great ball from Charlie Redmond here. But Sherlock, in fairness to him, he nearly got that one as well. Yeah, first time and had a right go. And, you know, with a little bit of luck, it could have gone into the corner of the net. He takes a very high percentage of those chances in front of goal. Kieran Corr, that's a lovely pitch, but he's had to come to midfield to get more into the game. Towards Peter Canavan. Brilliant in the opening minutes, but now we need to see a little bit more of him. He's looking for quality ball out of midfield. This to try and tie up the match at four points apiece. Peter Canavan's kick curls in delightfully once more. Team's level for the second time in this final. That's a third point for Peter Canavan. And the Dubs come forward through Paul Curran. Desi Farrell once again. Farrell having a quick look up to see who's making the darting run forward. It's Charlie Redmond. 
on towards Mick Galvin. There's two men on that inside forward line right now. To his right, he's got Jason Sherlock. Back here is Paul Curran. Once again, Charlie Redmond. Well, nobody in space there for him. Poor clearance there between goalkeeper and uh, the full-back. Chris Lawn, I think, having a quick word with McConnell. Waste of possession, really. So Farrell kicking in. And kicking wonderfully over the bar. A second point for Desi Farrell. Dublin lead by a point once again. Brian Steins. Jody Gormley picked it up very low. Gormley forward nicely as far as Kieran Lochran. Lochran gets the free in. Referee has a quick word with Paul Clark. And referee Paddy Russell just explaining. I noticed Peter is starting to kick at quite a number of the balls from the ground today. He kicked most of them from his hands in the semi final. That's true. I think this is a very wise tactic. And that's another wonderful kick. Sides level yet again. Four points for Peter Canavan. Five points apiece. Here's McGalvin. Galvin ran into the challenge from Ronald McGarrity. The referee says it was just McGarrity's momentum that carried him into that challenge. Now Kieran Corr, Tyrone's captain. Will he be taking Sam back once again to the north? Kieran Lochran dancing away from the challengers. Good tight control, but then he leaves it behind to Paul Curran. That was an excellent steal by Curran. Now Jim Gavin. Desi Farrell, good scoring chance. And he's put it over the bar. Dublin in front once again. So Desi Farrell here producing a third point in this match. A it was nicely set up, uh, Mick. Yes, it was well set up, and Desi, as I said earlier on, he's deadly today. Three chances, three points taken. It certainly is a seesaw battle, as they say. Doubling them with their noses just in front. Paul Beelan. Kicked into the inside forward line. And here's Jason Sherlock and a favourable touch that time. Still Sherlock. And who complete the race? It's in. And it's Charlie Redmond who scored. Injuring himself in the process. He'll make light of that. There was just a little misunderstanding in the Tyrone back line. Jason Sherlock in initially. And Charlie who's had many disappointments in All-Ireland Finals. He was in yeah. here. Watch Jason Sherlock just touch it forward under the falling body of McConnell, and in came Charlie, and he was not going to be stopped. Well, a bit like a rugby player racing for the line. Just saw the white of the line. In he came. As if his life depended upon it, he made it his. Paul Curran. Setting up another attack with Paul Clark roaming all over the field. Back to Curran once again. Kieran Corr in vain pursuit. But here's Curran. He's a marvellous footballer. Embellishing a wonderful performance in this final with his first point. And Dublin now lead by double scores. Three minutes to go to the break. He was straight through from the moment he got it. He had his mind made up that he was going to get a score and he banged it over from about 40 yards. A great score. Leelan tried to close him down. Pascal Canavan to Matt McLean in first chance of getting in the action fouled. But Tyrone are taking too much out of the ball. That'd be more advisable for them to let it go first time. Some more direct tactics perhaps will pay off. Here's Kieran McBride. McBride making that incision there, producing the foul, producing the free kick. That's exactly what they need, players who can take possession and run at the Dublin backs. Here's Peter Canavan. A vital kick, this one, to keep them well in touch, heading close to the break. Five points for Canavan, all of them from freeze. Four points the margin. Yeah, the wind has died down a little bit now, Jar, if you just watched the flag at the railway in there, I think the wind has died a little bit. And our friend, of course, is still up there next to the national flag. 
There he is, dangerous position. And into the bargain, he was smoking as well. <laughs> Here's Kieran Kaur. In towards Peter Canavan, back it comes in towards Jody Gormley. Now Stephen Lawn. Advancing with some purpose, but running into a cul-de-sac. Kieran Walsh. Dublin seem to have more space in the Tyrone half of the field. Here's Jason Sherlock, outside of the boot, good ball. McCallum does well against Desi Farrell. Farrell picks it up the second time, chance of a score here. Falling perhaps to Jim Gavin, and Gavin knocks it over the bar with great confidence. There's a greater purpose in this Dublin attack right now. Yeah, this was a great score again. Desi Farrell contested it and won it well and laid it back. And, and a great score well taken. But then again, earlier on, it was Jason uh, Sherlock that started that move. Dublin creating far more chances in this first half. 17 against 9 for Tyrone. But now Tyrone needing perhaps a late score in the end of this first half. Dinky McBride beaten by Mick Deegan, not standing on ceremony, knocking it away. They touched at their own player. That's Kieran McBride. Here it is again. And he fell down onto that ball. That's the final whistle of the first half. Dublin took their time to settle. Tyrone made by far the better start and were three points up before Dublin got going. But then that critical goal towards the end of the first half credited to Charlie Redmond and that certainly set Dublin on their way and they go in at half time leading by five points a Dublin finally to deliver it's Dublin 1-8 Tyrone six points underway Brian Stein straight away into the action again a high challenge there Stein's on the ground momentarily and let's hope it is just momentarily and he certainly hit with a crack there as he came out it's Brian Gormley challenging him down he went Pascal Canavan was in there as well it was Pascal Canavan who caught him Steins is OK. Keith Barr takes the free kick towards Desi Farrell, shouldered by Ronan McGarrity. Peels all around. It's going to be a Tyrone ball. Brian Gormley opting to leave it behind there. Seamus McCallum left, left footed forward towards Matt McGlennan. Can big Matty make a difference? Fergal Logan. Tyrone needs scores early in this half. That's in towards Kieran McBride. Might try to scamper away from Paddy Moran. And Moran has been having a very, very turgid afternoon so far. As I said there just before half time, the Dublin full back line are not playing well today. And if they can get the ball in quickly, a little uh, Tyrone could come back. They have the aid of the breeze at this present time. But they certainly need a bigger spread of scores as well. Five points so far for Peter Canavan. And just one point from play, and that from Jody Gormley. So here's perhaps the start of the comeback. Needs to be on target, and it is. Six points for Peter Canavan from Eric O'Hiron. Taking the acclaim of the Tyrone fans, four points between the teams. Well, Dublin. As we'll recall, made a very sleepy start of the first half. And they can't now afford to allow an energised Tyrone team to creep back into them. Well taken by Paul Bielan. Good distribution back down there as far as Paul Curran. Stolen here by Brian Gormley. One of the stars of some great under-21 teams at the start of this decade. Kieran Corn knocks it in. Nicely inside for Peter Canavan. Again, Kieran Core taking up the momentum of the attack. Back to Canavan once again. Another good looking kick and it's safe between the posts and it's over the bar. And there are just three points of a solitary goal separating these sides. He really is an outstanding footballer. 
footballer. No doubt the glory must have got to the Tyrone team inside. Yes, this was a, mar a marvellous goal from Peter Cannon. He, 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 he created it first, and then he got it back and banged it straight over the bar. This man is an exceptional player, and if they get more of the ball into him, and they're doing it now in the second half, they're getting the ball in good and low, and that's going to help Perot. So now what's going to happen? Paul Balin touches it down towards Paul Clark. Deftly back. Paul Curran winning the free kick. Pat O'Neill roars out the instruction towards Jim Gavin, I think. Desi Farrell trying to get away from Seamus McCallum. Still annoying the centre half back, right on the end line towards McGalvin. Comes to Jason Sherlock instead. Nice sidestep. Great block down there by Fergal Logan. A wonderful intervention by the midfielder is back there, augmenting his back line. Free out to Tyrone. It'll be more advisement for Jason to take his pint, but he's okay. I think he's over obsessed with the idea of getting goals. But he had a goal that time, but he, he should have taken his pint. Faye Devlin down there attending to Fergal Logan. This is uh, Jason scampering away from the challenges. That was a wonderful block by the Tyrone number eight. So McConnell then belting that out to Matt McLean. And a wonderful catch by McLean. And players peeling right and left of him. Stopped there by Paul Beelan, but uh, not a fair shoulder to shoulder into the chest. Paddy Russell explains. Hard to understand how anybody can leave the likes of McLean and then cush off a Mickey, you know? It was a marvellous fetch there. Well, when does a gamble become a tactic or a tactic can become a gamble? It's tactic, it's tactics and tactics there, don't you already? Here's Peter Canavan. And that's gone over. The gap is down to two points. It's very manageable. Peter Canavan's eighth point. A terrific contribution. Eight out of nine points. The very same thing happened in Dublin in the semi-final. They dominated the game for long stages and they left Cork back into it. If you remember, Cavanaugh went through and he nearly scored a goal in the finish. And Dublin have stopped playing at the moment. I tell you, this performance by Canavan is a Frank McGuigan-like performance if he gets quality ball. Good fetch by Beelan. He's working very hard out of midfield. Ambitiously kicking it ahead. Nobody there except Sean McLaughlin. Now Chris Law. To free. Sean McLaughlin pushed in the back. Peace restored. Play to continue. Faye Devlin, the taker of the free kick. I'm sure he'll have some nightmares when he watches the video again of that Dublin goal after 26 minutes of the first half. McDegan. Nicely down to Jason Sherlock, a lovely transfer into the arms of Paul Clark. Clark hitting it high, 20 metres out from the Tyrone goal. Desi Farrell foraging. Good work rate by Farrell, and that's a great point. A four point of the match by Desi Farrell. Jason Sherlock involved in the distribution. A good angle kick by Paul Clark, but wonderful finishing by this man here. Paul, he's having an exceptional game today, Farrell. He's deadly active, of course, and if he gets the ball into his hands, he rarely misses. And he's prepared to work hard as well. Four chances for Desi, four points. Back here is Keith Galvin, looks a little nervous. That's McLean in trying to brush aside Brian Steins, but fouling him. Steins was going down to pick that ball up when McLean came in. Keith Galvin is having a very, very shaky game there in the corner. There are a number of nervous players in that Dublin full back line, which Tyrone will certainly hope to exploit. Just a goal in it. Keith Barr, great tension about still. Pressure on the Dubs to end their losing sequence in the final. Pressure on Tyrone to maintain the sequence of Ulster wins. Here's Brian Gormley. Tyrone looking for their first ever All-Ireland title. That's McLean and taking it down to Jody Gormley. Paddy Moran out first time for the ball. Canavan allowing him. But Canavan was being 
double challenge that time, and Moran got out ahead of him. Here's Paul Curran. It's a tight situation. Jason Sherlock is pushed. Dublin get the free kick. Dublin with 18 frees so far awarded to them. And Pat O'Neill in there with some words for his players. This is what happened once again as we watch Charlie Redmond go in there with Fergal Logan exchanging some daily pleasantries. And the referee... What is he doing? He's sending them off, I think. Charlie Redmond's being sent off. The goal scorer earlier on in the game for that head got there on Fergal Logan. Dublin are down to 14 men. I think that's what the referees decided. Charlie collided there initially with Fergal Logan, then an attempted headbutt. Yes, but Charlie had got the free at that stage, and there was no need whatsoever. Well, he's not sent him off, has he? Charlie's still on the park. Very lucky to remain on the park, I can tell you there, Joe. Very, very lucky. Well, he's had the name taken. Well, he's had so much misfortune in All-Ireland Finals, it would have been a dreadful way for him to finish up this match. So, correction then, both sides at full stretch still. 15 against 15. Pascal Canavan now, low ball inside towards his brother Peter. Here's Keith Barr. Barr spreading the play neatly ahead to Miguel McDigan. Deegan picking up Charlie Redmond, very definitely part of the action. Towards Desi Farrell. Going back there is Chris Lord for Tyrone, he's tripped. In comes Paul Clark, it really is hotting up now quite considerably. This is where we watch Chris Lawn go down. And the trip from Desi Farrell. That's where Paul Clark came in, and the booking resulted. Peter Canavan opting to kick this one from the hands as Kieran Corr carries out running repairs. There's two points between the teams. Canavan has scored nine points. Eight out of nine from freeze. He just missed one. Two points the margin. It'll be a very, very edgy and nervous last four minutes. Vinnie yes. Murphy may be ready to come on. Here's Keith Barr, the 14 men of Dublin, leading by two points. Paul Clark, here's an important kick. And it's over the bar! Paul Clark gets just Dublin's second point of the second half. Dublin have a three-point lead. I make it about two and a half minutes left, not including injury time. Tyrone have been frustrated time and again. Here's Fergal Logan. Holding it up once again, slowing it somewhat, then releasing it into McBride. It comes to Kieran Corr. There's a man ahead of him. It's nicely forward there. And the referee says free in. That was a great run forward there by Paul Donnelly. Just instructing Brian Gormley to move back. Lazily struck and over the bar. Ten points for Canavan. One from play, nine from freeze. The gap, just two points. It's in injury time. Dublin, who last won the Sam McGuire Cup back in 1983. 
12 years on, the 14 men are now in injury time, but there are just two points between the teams, and Tyrone can still do it. Paul Donnelly wrestled and brought down by Gilroy, free, 45 metres out. Will Canavan opt to put this one over the bar? I think he will, yeah, but there's still a chance of getting another one. So it's now at the discretion of referee Paddy Russell. Yes, he's going for the point, lobbed in and put over. 11 points for Peter Canavan. What a contribution. But does he finish on the losing team? The next few seconds will tell the story. John O'Leary, the kick out. So now, what's going to happen here? Only a point in it. Fergal Logan has it for Tyrone. Are we to have a first draw since 1988? Here's McGarity. McGarity wrestled down by Paul Clark. Free kick quickly taken. Kieran Paul is unmarked. Paul, will he go for the score? He's pumping it in. McBride comes. So does John O'Leary. Fists it away. And he has Peter Canavan. Touches it on the ground and it's a free out. The Tyrone fans think that they've scored an equaliser. So does Sean McLaughlin. But the referee's whistle has sounded and delight will turn to agony for Sean McLaughlin. This is where the ball was fisted away very well by goalkeeper John O'Leary and the ball was touched on the ground there. We've now played three minutes of added time. There can't be much more. Dublin lead by a point. Keith Barr kicks it and Dublin are the Ireland champions from 1995. They did hang on. They were down to 14 men after goal scorer Charlie Redmond was sent off in somewhat bizarre circumstances. So Sam McGuire finally rests by the Liffey. By just a point, however, Dublin won 10, Tyrone 12 points. The Bank of Ireland Football Championship is won by Dublin. Biddy Early is resting happy in the heavens with Biddy Mulligan. Dublin take a 20-second title. Yes, an ale-biting finish with victory and unrestrained joy for the Dublin team and their supporters. Well, tonight the Dubs are relaxing at their victory banquet and as you can see, it's a very different atmosphere there than the dejection they had to suffer in 1992 and of course again last year. But for all of the Dublin delight, this year it's been the turn of someone else to suffer the pain of defeat. In a game lost by just a single point, there always has to be a thought for the might-have-beens of it all. Now, Jim Carney is at the Losers after-match function, talking to Peter Canavan and Eugene McKenna. And hello and welcome to the Burlington. Well, I can tell you that here the uh, heart of Tyrone football beats strong and true, because while there's disappointment all over this vast room. Uh, there's also a great sense of loyalty and a sense of pride and almost 800 people have gathered here well not to celebrate that's not the word but to show that they're still with their favorite team and their favorite players. Eugene, Mc Eugene McKenna, that's a thunderous ovation. Uh, the big crowd here still think a lot of this team. I'm sure you do too. I certainly do. The, the, I was very proud of them today. Now, uh, Eugene, your co-manager, Art McGrory, has decided to take the rest of the uh, night off. Uh, I guess he has headaches after all that happened here today. But earlier on on RTE Radio, he did express a lot of strong feelings about the game, uh, about what he perceived to be a lot of time wasting during the game and a lack of football in the game. And he was also bitterly disappointed that the point that Peter set up in the end uh, wasn't allowed. Do you share those feelings? Well, it's, it's, I wouldn't like it to be sour grapes, you know, but... Uh the referee probably would realise that he didn't have as good a game as he could have and he probably won't include it in the CV application for the next Solar and final. But having said that, you know, the, uh, the were, it was a very disjointed second half. Any time we got a, a head of steam up, Dublin were able to frustrate us and I think they're good experience probably told. And that last incident, when you might have snatched an equaliser and a second bite? Well, yes, but I suppose realistically we shouldn't have been depending on that one. We had enough chances earlier and enough possession, but 
disappointing. If I could, you don't, as a manager, I'm sure, like to single out players, but we do have to take away from this All-Ireland final the memory of all those wonderful points by Peter Canavan. That said, Peter is a remarkable talent, and uh, he's something that the game deserves in Ireland, and, and he certainly is intended to stay in the game, I hope, and he's a big asset to Toronto and to football in general. Ladies and gentlemen, Eugene McKenna. Eugene, let you finish your dinner. So, so as Eugene goes to finish his meal, we're joined now by Peter Canavan and by Captain Kieran Carr. Peter, if I could talk to you just before we meet Kieran. Uh, Peter, very hard luck on uh, the result of the match, but that last incident, hours later, what do you think of it? Well, we still didn't get the point, and that's all that matters now. Uh, at the time, I'm not too sure. I thought maybe the ball was bouncing, and uh, when Sean kicked it over, I thought uh, the point stood, uh, and I couldn't really believe it now, and the ref had, had give a free out. So you were confident uh, when you punched the ball in your mind that you were doing the right thing? That's right, yeah. And it was with the closed fist? I think it was, Jim, I think it was. <laughs> right. Now, Peter, uh, apart from that, a great performance by you and by the lads, heroic in, in many ways all through. Uh, it, it is being said all around the room here tonight that you are significantly a younger team than most other uh, major challengers around the country. Uh, some people might be saying it was a fairly good performance, but I think the boys here know themselves that that wasn't... Uh, a great throne performance. Uh, we know we're capable of much better and I think in the years to come uh, we'll play much better than that and maybe be more successful. Ladies and gentlemen, the peerless Peter Canavan. <laughs> Here on car, hard luck, hard luck. You'd love to have uh, said a victory speech. It was John O'Leary's turn. Yeah, well, I, I had the speech wrote out and I had memorised in my head, but unfortunately, on the day I wasn't able to perform. Um, looking back on the game, basically, as Peter said, we had our chances, and we, we missed our chances at the wrong time. We should have took our chances when we had them. Second half, uh, with 20 minutes pressure on Dublin, we didn't take our chances. You know, Peter talks about flicking the ball on for that last point. You know, before that, we should have had the game over. Dublin had, had faded out of the game. But that's all Ireland's for you. you know, good luck to Dublin. They've, they've been through hard times as well. They've lost two or three all Ireland's the last four years. And um, all I can say on behalf of the team and on behalf of the management is fair play to Dublin. And on that note, we leave you from here. But Tyrone football down, but very definitely not out. Kieran Carr and his team and their supporters. Michael. Thanks, Jim Carney. A very uh, difficult situation, obviously, for the losing team to come and meet the media, meet RT, and we thank them indeed for their time. Well, the minor final at Croke Park this afternoon was a rare outing for the Maroon and White of Westmead, contesting only their second underage decider in their history. Their opponents were the Ulster champions Derry, looking for the county's fourth minor football title. The commentator for